Hey, welcome back to the Air Warfare Group, everybody. This is Juice. So today's video is a supercarrier SOP video for Air Warfare Group members, uh, but it's also beneficial for those that are new to the DCS supercarrier module or new to CV Ops in general. Uh, it should help you uh, identify some of the key areas that you'll need to know where you're at on the deck so you can safely get to where you need to get to go. Without further ado, let's get started. Now before you start up on the supercarrier, I recommend you go to the DCS supercarrier guide, which will be linked. If you don't own it yet, it'll be linked in the description below, along with the aircraft carrier operating procedures put out by Peter Ross, GB, Lex, Speed and Angels, and others in the community. Uh, a really good reference. I'll put a link to where you can download that and get the PDF for that. Really good resource for DCS pilots. Um, put together by real world pilots, two of them which are carrier, uh, carrier born aircraft pilots. So, without uh, any other delays, let's get into the meat and potatoes. Now, they say that the uh, aircraft carrier flight deck is the most dangerous workplace uh, in the world. And uh, I've never served on an aircraft carrier. If you have, put some comments in there what you think about it. But it is definitely uh, full of hazards, full of unique situations that are only per that only pertain to this environment. Uh, no matter how you look at the aircraft carrier, what angle you uh, approach it at, you'll find all kinds of new places, unique areas that you don't see in any other type of airport environment. And this, car uh, this carrier briefing is mostly to um, to bring you up to speed on what some of those common areas are called and everything. So the best way to look at this is from a top-down view uh, f of the carrier deck. This is a screen capture from DCS World. This is our, our initial crew setup when we arrived at the carrier. Uh, this was how the deck was set up for us and everything. Uh, so let's say you're parked here uh, and you want to get to Cat 4 way up here. Uh, if you know where you're at and know where you need to go, need to go, you can find the most expeditious way and safest way to get there. Uh, learning where you are and how to get there and what you need to watch out for and what other areas uh, are are on the carrier will keep you from having a haphazard route going out there and, and causing any delays. Especially when I say the word delay, when you're trying to get multiple aircraft off at the same time. So. So the main components that we'll talk about first are the elevators and the catapults. And the catapults first are numbered from right to left, and that's Cat 1, Cat 2, Cat 3, and Cat 4. Cat 1 and 2 are bow cats, and Cat 3 and 4 are waist cats. If you're on Cat 4, uh, be advised, here's Cat 3 right here. Uh, in DCS, if you're trying to do multiple aircraft launch, we, we usually launch in sections and then form up as divisions if we have a four ship. We'll usually launch in pairs, and we'll have like dash one and dash two take off, and then dash three and dash four take off simultaneously. If you're launching in pairs, and you want to use cat three or cat four, I recommend you use one of the other cats, cat one or cat two, to uh, launch those pairs. Because if you're hooked up to either cat three or cat four, you won't be able to hook up to the other cat. So uh, to uh, either, if you're on cat four, you won't be able to hook up to cat three until that cat is cleared. Now you can see on this picture here, down in the lower part, you can see how cat three and cat four merge together on the rollout track for the shuttle. So now the elevators are numbered similar, uh, one, two, three, four. Up on the starboard side, you've got elevator one in the forward part, elevator two just after that in front of the island. You've got elevator three aft of the island, and then over here on the port side, you've got elevator four just forward of the LSO stand. Uh, on the starboard side areas that are along with the catapults, you've got cat one and two is the bow cats on the starboard side, and you've got the three elevators there. You have other areas known as the point in between the two elevators right there is called the corral. The island is new, normal is 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 kind of obvious what it's called. The island it's like the island on a big old flat ocean of of deck, and uh, you also hear this referred to as a superstructure maybe, and that's a little bit uh, outdated term probably from World War II. And then you've got the junkyard, and the junkyard's pretty iconic because you can see all of the support vehicles, uh, the crane, Tilly if they've got one, you know, any a forklift, a fire truck, sometimes extra equipment. Usually the fire truck is all spread out around the deck for uh, in a ready posture and stuff. But extra tug equipment, support equipment, ladders and stuff like that are out there. Uh, back here is the patio and a lot of times we'll use this area for a setup area to get a helicopter uh, out there to, uh, to be set up ready to go when we're launching uh, helo ops and stuff. Now if you look at the port side along with the Cat 3 and Cat 4 which are the waste cats and Elevator 4 you've got 
the crotch and the crotch is pretty important because this is what I am using I'm kinda guiding my velocity vector towards the crotch I'm kinda aiming the nose at the crotch as I'm coming down uh, through the groove is because the ship is steaming 10 degrees to my left so as I'm moving in if I point right at it this uh, actually it's shipping it's steaming uh, 10 degrees to my right and if I'm coming down the groove and I just point at the landing field uh, without correcting for the ship's uh, angle uh, I will not end up in the middle of my lane when I do my touchdown point back here we've got the finger for obvious reasons why it's called that and then we've got the fantail. And the fantail is the it's also uh, come across uh, you may hear it called the ramp uh, because it is angled up like a ramp a little bit to help in case somebody does hit it. But there have been aircraft that have crashed into the back of the ship halfway up that ramp and broken to and and people die and fireballs start and everything. You can see all kinds of videos on that. Now you're out and about and you're ready to come back you are armed with a lot better knowledge of what is on the carrier what areas are uh, are called and how you can reference those and communicate with your partners uh, some other areas that we need to talk about though is the LSO station that's going to be crucial to help you get aboard that's where the LSO's platform uh, LSO's are if you are not flying and want to do LSO even if you put your autopilot on you can go into the LSO station uh, in the supercarrier module by hitting left alt F9 and it gives you access to uh, this li nice little plat cam or the LSO platform cam uh, so that you can see uh, I don't show it in this picture but if you look down you can actually see who's in in what stage of the groove or who's first and second and third and fourth and you can see their fuel states and stuff too now other areas that we also need to talk about are the street and the six pack those are the common uh, terms and you can get all of these out of the carrier operations guide by speed and angels uh, but that is the middle area there the street and the six pack so if you called up said hey I'm, I'm where are you at you know there's a lot of times if I was down on elevator four and my buddies are all spread out around I so uh, which part are you in because I can't see tail numbers or I don't know which ones are which ones they started at uh, they'll say I'm in the street or I'm in the six pack that means that are right there in the middle. Up here is called the box because you're kind of boxed in between uh, cat one and cat two. And then going back to this view, uh, looking at the additional points of interest that I wanted to point out, you've got the four jet blast deflectors or JBDs. Uh, those are kind of crucial because you'll want to make sure you trigger the launch sequence by taxiing over those to get to your assigned catapult uh, and also you're going to want to make sure that if you're lining up behind an aircraft that's being taken in, uh, that's taking off in front of you you'll want to get behind that so you'll be next in line to get on the catapult uh, there are two catapult control rooms which uh, they call the bubble and the one in the lower lower right side in the middle of in the box area is the catapult control room before you'll see it looks like a little turtle shell sticking up it's, it raises up hydraulically or pneumatically or something but it is in between the cat 1 and cat 2 and then you've got a waste cat uh, control room over here that services both cat 3 and cat 4 and it's also raceable and lowerable along the side there on the catwalk uh, over here, I believe these, don't quote me on these, but uh, if you guys have any uh, input on this, go ahead. I believe these are weapons elevators. Uh, I know when we worked in Arma 3, we had these working where you could actually go in and, and, and walk around on the deck and go down in the elevator and get in the belly of the ship where they had bombs and stuff and everything. The Ford class carriers are using a different elevator system. That's a whole new animal. If you have any information you'd like to share about that, you know from that you've got from an open source uh, go ahead and throw it in the comments we'd love to see that if you guys post any links to anything uh, I think I have to go through and approve it first but I usually get that approved right away so if you have any links to videos you want to share you can put those in the comments too they may not show up right away but I will uh, check them out and then approve them over here you've got the wires um, remember one two three and four wires uh, the one wire is the farthest one back to the cat uh, to the to the fan tail uh, and the number four wire is the one that's farthest forward in the rollout in the landing lane. Uh, those four wires, um, you know, the if you're on on the ball or on the glide slope, um, you should contact the the hook in between wire two and wire three. That's the goal, but it's not always uh, not always capable with pitching decks. So a good cap 
or a good trap is wire two, three, or four, uh, depending on the states and stuff like that. I've gotten an OK wire four, and I've got an OK wire three, and an OK wire two. So, another thing that is shown on the deck but not functional in DCS is the barrier. Uh, that's the net that they can raise up where if you needed a little additional help to stop the jet, you know, in case you miss the wires, you only got one pass, you're low on gas, they can raise that up and, and catch you like a spider web. I mentioned the uh, the the ball or the the Fresnel lens. This is the improved Fresnel optical landing system or Eiffels we call it. Uh, you also, if you don't change the settings in DCS, you get this showing up in your uh, in your screen. Uh, a little uh, representation of the green lights, the red lights, and the and the yellow lights going up the middle. And this is what helps you get aboard the LSOs. It'd be nice if we could control this uh, or at least cut control the cut lights from the LSO station, we could push a button and, and get the cut lights or the wave off lights and everything. Uh, that would be really cool, especially since we're usually on SRS when we're doing this. Uh, we have not worked out an LSO training program yet, so we're all over the place with that. So we've been mostly waiting for DCS to get uh, the LSO function more operable and get the, uh, the AI uh, able to turn it off or just able to improve the AI for LSOing. So now that you have all that information, you're ready to go out and fly CV Ops. Uh, do this with friends, guys. Tactical DCS has a really good uh, community. Uh, lots of friendly players in your time zone. Uh, we'll put a link to their Discord in in the uh, description below, and I recommend you go into them. If you're in the, the Viper, we have a Viper Crew Discord uh, that I will put a link into for you to go over there. And then I just want to say. 2022 has been a great year for us. We are just about to crest 10,000 subscribers. Um, I don't have any prizes for that 10,000th. Uh, our prize for everybody is that we are going to try to put, come up with more quality content based on real world experience in the air warfare business. Uh, we're not fighter pilots, uh, but we are pilots and we are military uh, air warfare specialist or former specialist uh, that use open source information and DCS to create what we call a teamwork simulator and to us DCS is a teamwork simulator that challenges us challenges us at the individual level uh, that's the best way I can put it uh, it it can be a game it can be a simulator it can be a war simulator uh, it can be anything you want it to be but for us it's to practice teamwork in the teamwork environment Hope this helps. Let us know what you think. Be sure to share it with a friend if they're into CV Ops or just getting into it. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Always, we'll get back to you. Everybody have a great 2023. Happy New Year. This is Juice.